Good morning, brothers and sisters. Happy Sabbath. And we're here at my home in uh, Claycross, Derbyshire, in the United Kingdom. I'm here with Brother Kyle. Brothers. As we prepare to take the sacrament, and I'm going to ask Brother Kyle if he can give an opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so happy to be here this morning to bless this, your son's sacrament. We ask, dear Lord, Heavenly Father, that you will be with us and all our brothers and sisters as we partake of the sacrament. And I say this in the name of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Carl. As today, as per usual, we are, we pray for peace as well in our, in our world today. Uh, We live and see so many stuff on the news, violence and, and stuff going on, and we wonder when there will be an end, but there will be. And we pray for that day to come. So we hope you got your emblems ready, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're going to say the, the prayer on the... The bread. Yep. Oh, okay, so if you'd like to bow and kneel... And I'll just put my my head up. At this time, we welcome all present to Christ's table. We invite all who would participate to do so as an expression of the peace and love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we worship. The Lord's Supper is a sacrament, a time to focus on the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. As disciples of Christ, we renew our covenants and recommit together to his mission, to grow closer to Jesus Christ, as individuals and as a community, worshipping Jesus Christ through God's Word, the sacraments, ministry, outreach, Kabbalah, and Jubilee. We encourage all that are worthy to receive communion to do so frequently and devoutly. So if you'd like to bow and kneel, and Kyle will say the prayer on the, the bread. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this bread to the souls of all those who partake of it, that they may eat in remembrance of the body of Thy Son, and witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they are willing to take upon them the name of thy Son, and always remember him, and keep his commandments which he hath given them, that they may always have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. So if you'd like to bow and kneel, and uh, we should do the same for the wine. O oh God, the Eternal Father, we ask Thee, in the name of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify this wine to the souls of all those who drink of it that they may do so in remembrance of the blood of thy Son, which was shed for them, that they may witness unto thee, O God the Eternal Father, that they do always remember him, that they may have his Spirit to be with them. Amen. Amen. I've been thinking a lot about John 3.16 and I've kind of been inspired recently to look at some things. When I started writing it, 
there was a point where I looked at John and it says J-O-N and then I wrote J-A-M and then I looked up James 3.17. And for me, this is a very important scripture. I won't say a saving scripture, but it says, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And 3.18 says, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And I believe that, you know, obviously for me and many others, Jesus is the guide and the important role. But what he taught is really encapsulated in this scripture and is the wisdom that we need from above. So we do need to remember to be peaceable and gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy, with good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And what that means for me is that there will be challenges, there will be difficulties, but when we're pure in heart, we are seeking to share the knowledge that we have or our experiences, but we don't all have the exact same experiences. We are each individual children of God. We are each, you know, coming from different backgrounds, different faiths sometimes, different experiences. I had a very challenging and difficult childhood. And I learned from that to be very willing to advocate for myself. And Jesus is an advocate also. He's often an advocate for the meek or the rejected or the poor. And sometimes we're in that darkness and that point where we need somebody else to advocate for us. And in that, I feel like Jesus is a great advocate. But I also feel like Jesus wants us to be like him. He wants us to advocate for ourselves. He wants us to do good and seek wisdom, seek mercy, seek kindness, um, and really love others. And that's what the example of Jesus is for me. I look at that and I really do believe that that is such a huge part of the gospel that I believe. I am a respecter and worshiper of Christ. Don't get me wrong. I really do think that his example, his teachings, his love are so important to guide us and direct us and and bring us back to our heavenly parents and live a good life. It's not about, you know, contention and coveting what somebody else has, but really experiencing what we have in life and being appreciative and grateful for it. And I know it probably sounds rude, but I do have some challenges in my life that I've had to work through. And I know everybody's gone through challenges. Whatever trauma or triggers you've experienced, whatever hopelessness or helplessness you've experienced, whatever isolation or insecurity. I mean, people deal with substance abuse or, you know, chemical imbalances or a sense of shame. And I feel like as we look at what Christ teaches in James 3.17, we can overcome so much in our own lives. But looking at others and not necessarily judging them, but being understanding of their experiences is important. Why? Because no matter who they are, what their station is life, in life, how much money they make, what their experiences have been through, we should treat everyone 
with respect. But sometimes when your station in life has made you the queen and you think that you are above everybody and you are perfect or you are glorified because of who you are, it's not because of who you are. It's the blessings that you've been given. And sometimes those people that have almost turned to unrighteous dominion need to be treated in a way that reminds them of who they are, that they are a person too. And I'm not saying that they need to be treated poorly, but they need to be treated like a person and nobody should be treated poorly, but treat them like everybody else. You are special because you're a person. You're not special because of your station or how much money you make or the color of your skin or the religion that you are. You are special because you are a child of God. More importantly, though, I think that there are many of us who feel like we've been treated bad. We've been treated so bad for so long that we feel like kind of not good enough. And we need to be willing to help others, to reach out, offer a hand, and remind them, remind each other, remind myself that I am a person, I have value, and that I am a queen because I am a daughter of God. Now, take that how you want. If it doesn't work for you, that's okay too. But that is what I believe that the gospel's about. And I believe that that's what Jesus teaches. Jesus challenged the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Jesus challenged those in leadership who were doing unrighteous things. And Jesus also went into areas with the tax collector or sinners or those who were considered unrighteous. And reminded them that they are special too. And I think we all have something that we're here to do. We are individuals. We are children of God. And God loves us not for the money we make. Not for the clothes we wear. Not for the color of our skin. But what is in our hearts. And in our hearts, I believe that if we are pure and are true to ourselves... And we are peaceable, not just with others, but with ourselves. We are gentle and easy to be entreated, willing to look at another perspective, willing to see that our experiences are not the only way to look at things, full of mercy and good fruits. And without hypocrisy, we will do so much better in our lives. Again, something that's silly, but... I watched the movie Overboard, the old one from the 80s with Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn last night. And there was a line in it after she had had amnesia and then realized who she was and went back to the boat. One of her, you know, people who worked for her said to her, his name was Andrew, I believe. He said to her, there are few people who get to experience so many stations in life. And that is really a blessing. And being willing to see it from another angle, being willing to have an open heart and be merciful for others is the teaching of God, is the teaching of Christ, is the teaching of James 3.17. I appreciate your time. Thanks for listening. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. So I'm going to ask for prayers as well for me and Kyle. Kyle's got another gallstone and I, I'm i going to have to go for eye, eye laser treatment because I've got blood leakage in both eyes. So. I'd like to say, brothers and sisters, please keep Brother Michael in your thoughts and prayers. As he has his struggles and problems with his eyes. Please say prayers for them. And for Brother Carl for his ghost. Don't let he get another appointment soon. And we also pray for Brother Mark Cleaver. There in uh, in Preston. Preston. Is it Preston? Preston, or? yeah.
Yeah, he's Preston, yeah. yeah. We pray for him and he, we know he watches and he's been joining in on the prayers on a Thursday night. I couldn't do it this Thursday, so I think Mark was there, so we got some people to pray for. Yeah. Uh, we had a prayer request in for prayer for some people and I can't remember, but I remember on on Thursday. So we pray for all those people that need healing prayers. And we pray for our fellowship as well, that more people watch these videos. And uh, I'm going to say a closing prayer. I know we're short but sweet, but we just wish you a happy Sabbath. And uh, I'm going to finish off with a closing prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and we thank you for your spirit being with us. And we ask that your spirit continue being with us and everybody that knows Jesus that follows you. We pray for our friends all over the world. We pray for, for Terry's in Germany and Brother Larry from the Church of Jesus Christ for the Elijah message. I got a message from Robert that I guess they're on their way to Africa to do some uh, uh, missionary work, so we pray for them. Pray for Robert in, in Germany. We pray for David and Brandt uh, in the Americas and, and Wednesday and uh, all the other people we know that have something to do with the fellowship and Alan. And we pray that this fellowship which David does, and that brings all different churches together so we can come as one. I can see this as a step to peace, that it's a way of all churches coming together. So God, you brought us to David's church, and we ask that you bring more people, Lord. And that, yeah, we can bring peace. So I say these things in your gift to us, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Shabbat Shalom. Yeah. Oh, and look out for the address of the church website. And don't forget, prayer night on Thursday night.